Go this week, our world changed overnight. The World Health Organization declared the novel coronavirus outbreak a global pandemic. Within days, New York became the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak. The city shut down, schools and businesses closed. Thousands of people got sick with the virus and many lives were lost. We all felt so much uncertainty. Today, we've made great progress. Vaccines and treatments are widely available. We're living with COVID-19, but where do we go from here in the fight against the virus and other viruses to come. Dr. David Perlin leads a team of researchers at the Hackensack Meridian Health Center for Discovery and Innovation in New Jersey. Joining us right now, live via Zoom, good morning to you, Dr. Perlin. Good morning, Mary. Great and to be with you. You were one of the first experts we consulted with on our questions about COVID-19. That was three years ago. You were in the studio before Zoom really got started. 75,000 patients ago for more for our hospitals. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's uh, it seems like it's uh, been a long time ago, but it's really uh, just been uh, a bit of a, a blur as we've sort of uh, moved past and gone uh, from one phase of the pandemic to the next. And now as we're in this sort of coexistence phase with the pandemic, uh, we've 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 learned a lot. Uh, we've uh, made tremendous strides, uh, but we have a long ways to go. I wanted to ask you, researchers were able to develop vaccines in record time, but now where do we go from here? What have scientists learned from that entire experience? Right. So one of the things that we've learned is that um, the investment in uh, science that, that led to, um, to us being able to develop rapid um, uh, vaccine platforms uh, was really critical to, to get us to the point where we could create vac effective vaccines that could be deployed on a wide scale basis. But I think for the next phase, we've also learned that vaccines are not enough uh, for, for many of the diseases that we study uh, worldwide, uh, in, including uh, HIV, hepatitis C, others, vac vaccination is, is really not a part of uh, our, our approach. And for diseases like influenza, vaccination is, is really important as it, as it has been for COVID-19, but we need, uh, we need drugs as well. And for COVID-19, uh, we developed uh, antibody cocktails, but as uh, the uh, virus variants have continued to evolve, they've uh, evolved so that they're no longer as if they're no longer effect uh, that the uh, antibody cocktails are, are no longer effective in, in, in many cases. And so we've had to turn to small molecule drugs like uh, uh, Paxlovid or Monopiravir, and those are extremely effective. They're just as effective on the current variants as they were on the original strain. So what we've learned is that we need a combination of vaccination, we need drugs, which we have, and we need to stay on top of it. But I will say that you know, if, if we've learned nothing else, what we realize is that this virus is not going to quit. So it will continue to evolve and we need to stay on top of it and, and try to get out in front of it. And that's what we're trying to do and develop next generation drugs. I, mean, I wanted to talk to you about that. Your lab is working with a group of scientists to prepare for future viruses, hmm. better vaccines. Tell us about the project and what drug treatments are you working on right now? So right now, what we're what we're looking to do is to create the the next generation drugs that will be effective against SARS-CoV-2, the etiologic agent for COVID-19, but other coronaviruses. So we're looking for what are called hand coronavirus uh, drugs that no matter what the coronavirus is, whether it was SARS-1 in 2003 or or the two or the 2019 uh, coronavirus that we're dealing with now that will be prepared, that will have effective reagents, effective drugs that, that can be used. But it's not just COVID-19. I mean, there are other pandemics that um, that are ongoing throughout the world and future pandemics. So we, we need to try to be smart about this and see if we can if we can create broad acting antiviral agents that will be effective. And this requires everybody, you know, or, or everybody to come to the table. That's the academic community, the medical community, pharmaceutical, diagnostics, and so forth. And that's exactly what we're doing. We've put them all together under a common umbrella and said, here's our challenge, let's solve the problem.
Dr. David Perlin, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Chief Scientific Officer and Executive Vice President at Hackensack Meridian Health Center for Discovery and Innovation. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Mayor.